I loved my patients, I really did, but that need to grow professionally was what was making me unhappy. When you're first starting out a business, it's gonna take you a while to get the business going before you even get to the level where you're thinking about your bracket and following some colors and all that stuff. When you start coaching other people, when you start mentoring other people, that's when you learn even more about it because now you're seeing it from a different lens. We are closing the gap on half a million views on YouTube. That's not the craziest part. The craziest part is that most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Do us a solid, smash that subscribe button and share it with a friend. So today we got a very special guest with us. She's a woman of faith, mother, wife, business owner, property manager, Morin County School District Board of Education Vice President. Amy, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you. And um, yeah, this is this is amazing. I was just complimenting you on my way in, but your office looks great. You did a really good job with it. Appreciate it. So. I want to ask you, how, how do you balance all these things that you're doing? How do you balance, they say like the work-life balance in, in business. How, how do you balance, because that's... It's a lot of stuff. It is a lot of stuff. It is a lot of stuff. Um, I have a great support system, first and foremost. Um, my family, my brother, sisters, dad, um, they're all very, very supportive. My husband is extremely supportive. For those of you who don't know Nick Grantham, um, but I mean, he has supported me through all of this stuff and said, go for it, babe. You know, you can do this. And um, I, I call it a personality flaw, actually but it's like the hamster wheel is just always turning. You know, it seems like I'm, I've always got something in the works, you know? So I don't know if there's a straight answer on how to balance it, but um, definitely got to stay organized. You know, I, I live and die by a schedule and a planner and you guys would probably just, you know, lose your minds if you actually took a look inside of my planner. But um, everything from what do the kids have going on to what do we have going on to this date and hey, we got an invite to do this. Well, better make sure, you know, we don't have something else going on. So um, we like to stay busy. I like to stay busy. It's, it's personality flaw. So um, why, do you, why do you say it's a personality flaw? <laughs> just because like, why, why would somebody sign up for all this stuff? Why would, why would somebody, you know, it's like a glutton for punishment kind why, of thing. Why would you sign up to just stay at home and not do anything all day? That's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, I, I am like want to be like that, but then I'm there for like 30 seconds. So I'm like, all right, I got to get up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I don't know, maybe it's not a personality flaw, but it's definitely just a, a trait. And, um, so staying organized is probably the biggest key to how I, how I do it all. And, um, notes, take a lot of notes <laughs> so yeah. I don't forget stuff. <laughs> oh, for sure. So for me, if it's not on the calendar, it's like, does it doesn't exist. exist. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So yeah. you were like in the healthcare field for like roughly 12 years. What prompted that change to go from healthcare to insurance? I know. Yeah. It, it was kind of a 180. And um, it's so funny because you guys can probably identify, but everything that you do, the people that you work with, the people that you interact with, it seems like you think back on some of that stuff when you get to where you are or where you think you're, you are, or you're supposed to be or whatever. So I will never forget this, but I was in physical therapy school, the assistant program, and I was doing, um, an internship. And so keep in mind, this was like my dream, like physical therapy was all I wanted to do. I grew up being an athlete. I had to do physical therapy myself on different injuries and stuff. And, um, you know, it was like, there's nothing else for me. And, um, so I get to this internship and my clinical instructors, you know, going through, Hey, you did this great. I'd like to see you improve on this. And I'm like rolling my eyes, like, come on, man. You know, like I know <laughs> I got this and uh, they're picking you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so we get to the final day and he's doing his evaluation and going through notes and things. And he's like, Amy, I think you did great. I think you're going to get bored. And I'm like, <laughs> Like, this is all I've ever wanted to do. You know, this is my dream. And what age um, are you at this time? I was 23 at that okay. time. Yeah, 23. So, you know, still like basically a child, yeah. you know, but um, I never, ever forgot that. And so, you know, 10 years later, I'm working in my career. I had a really nice long career at it was CPMC before it changed hands a couple times. But um, 
met a lot of really great people. I loved my patients. My supervisor was wonderful, Connie Weingarten, and she's actually over at MCC now. But just something happened where it was like, all right, I'm bored. Like, I, I got to do something more. And so I just, I kept pushing that ceiling and I worked with her and I told her, you know, hey, I, I want to move up. I want a bigger role. I want more responsibility. Um, you know, I want to have a better influence. I want to manage a team. I want to do these different things. And I think it was just, you know, I got that, that itch to grow professionally. And so started looking at some different avenues, um, checking out different uh, master's programs. Hey guys, let's take a quick break from the podcast. We want to help business owners just like you stay competitive in today's marketplace. So for a limited time, we're giving you 10% off your next video project, whether it's a brand video, social media content, or ads. Just mention this podcast to get started. Let's get back to the show. I actually started my master's, my MBA, um, and I got about a quarter of the way through it. But all that time I was job hunting, you know, I was on websites for UC Health and, you know, trying to kind of stay in that field, but also moving up to a director position. And it was so telling. And uh, if Connie's watching this, like, I don't know, I, I would tell her this in person, but I've never told her this before. The happiest I was at that job was when she went on a six week vacation and left me in charge. You know, and I'm like, all right, this is this is really telling for me that I need to grow. I want to grow, you know. So anyways, um, started looking at different jobs, front range, stuff like that, trying to move um, either a, a lateral move or a vertical move, whatever you want to call it. Uh, started my master's and then I stumbled upon the the insurance gig for State Farm. And um, I mean, State Farm's a great company. I had State Farm insurance at the time and um, decided to go ahead and put through an application. There was an opportunity in Fort Morgan. And I'm like, how cool would that be to work five minutes from my house? Um, you know, and I, I didn't really know everything that it entailed for the job. Work, have my own team. Wear khakis. Yeah, exactly. Khakis in red. Yeah, I think I've worn <laughs> khakis twice since I've actually been an agent. So anyways, I, I really wasn't expecting it to go anywhere. I, I didn't know. I had no idea. But I am a firm believer. Like you said, I'm a woman of faith. And um, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And so put through the application, talk to a recruiter within days. And before you know it, like they've got you going through this rigmarole, jumping through hoops, um, had to get licensed. So prior to State Farm, I, I did do one other insurance gig. Um, I worked for a um, life insurance financial services company, and um, everything happens for a reason. Sorry, keep hitting the mic. Um, so that job required you to go and meet people where they were. You know, you didn't have an office, you didn't have a staff. There was very, very little support. But um, my mom passed away in 2018, and I kid you not, guys, I was visiting a prospect in the town that my parents lived in. And I was done and I was just kind of like beat up and I'm like, man, what am I doing? I don't know, I'm gonna go over to mom and dad's, just say hi. Mm. And I still remember, sorry. Bless you. <laughs> um, <sighs> you have an edit button, right? You're good. My mom was like standing there doing dishes and she was like, hey, what are you doing here? You know, and it was like she was shocked to see me. And it was like she was like, you want to have dinner with us? And so we had dinner and it was like leftovers or something so basic. And um, that was one of the last times that I even saw her. So, you know, I was miserable doing that job. It wasn't a good fit for me. There was no support, even though it kind of got me started in that that insurance industry. But everything happens for a reason. And I, I still think back to that moment. You know, it's um, so I, I can't hate on that. You know, I, I chalk that up to my experience and I chalk that up to, um, you know, being at the right place at the right time and where God puts you. So anyway, um, appreciate you telling us that, that story. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, sorry. So anyways, 
got hired on with State Farm. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it it is a gamut what they put you through. We are closing the gap on half a million views on YouTube. That's not the craziest part. The craziest part is that most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Do us a solid, smash that subscribe button and share it with a friend. Um, and now that I'm in it, it's like some days it's just nonstop. You know, there's building maintenance issues, there's staffing issues, there's um, customer issues, claim issues. Like, it's just like, good Lord, can we get a break? It's almost like when you're in the simulation, this seems so easy. But then once you're actually dealing with real people in real situations, it's like, oh, no, oh, it's, yeah. it's a whole different ballgame for sure. Keep, Absolutely. People will be people. There's a there's a thing that I read a while ago, um, and, I, and I looked into it and stuff, and it says if you want to, like, say when you're recruiting, you're hiring and stuff. So mm -hmm. it goes kind of with, the, with this test. They say take them out to, to for lunch because you want to see how fast they're going to be decisively. Mm -hmm. Like how fast are they going to order? So, um, if they take longer, they're more an analytical person. So they might not be as good of, like, taking action right away or if they order right away like oh just give me this and they're just good with it you know it so it just helps you learn a lot about the personality or how they even the treat the the waiters or how they treat the waiters yeah. and the waitresses so mm -hmm. that's a good that, yeah so that's interesting that you said that they do something like that so i could see it being similar like that absolutely um there, there was a thing I, I read back i made a video about it actually it's a this new ai thing like sora is like sora basically for is replacing video editors pretty much because it can it's AI generated content that you basically just type in uh, whatever whatever you want. You can be like, oh, give me a blue ocean with a red house in the middle of it. It'll just generate automatically. So like, that's already kind of starting to take some some editors' jobs out there. So like, what do you, what's something that you do to kind of keep up with like the new like uh, AI coming into the insurance industry and like everything moving online and and, and everything just being so much so much more fast paced. Absolutely, automation is is a big term that we use. Um, it's interesting. Like one thing I love about my job is the support, the level of support on so many levels. Um, you know, if you've got an underwriting question, a service question, claims question, they've got people. You know, people that can help you. I hope that they continue on the model that they currently have where it's people oriented, it's service oriented because yeah, some days I look at it and I'm like, okay, this is what I did today. Could that have been done with AI? Could an AI something take my job, you know? And, but there's certain situations where it's like, no, like we can never, we can never replace people. Absolutely not. So I think with uh, the underwriting process and um, some of the claim handling and stuff like that, yeah, I do think there's some automation and even just the service stuff. I mean, you need to change an address. Yep, there you go. It's it's doesn't take uh, a manual input really to do that, you know. So um, I think it's got its place. I'm just hoping that the technology doesn't overtake us and not in my lifetime anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it was interesting though. Um, we went to a school board convention in, I think it was Florida two years ago. Um, and it's the national school board convention. So you're talking to school board members from all over the nation and principals and uh, superintendents and uh, all kinds of people. And they were talking about AI and how they're using that to help teachers. Because as we all know, teachers are overworked, underpaid, all the things, right? So this teacher, and of course it's a company who's giving the presentation, so it's like their pitch on how they can help you with their AI, make your job easier. So this teacher um, used a really great example, so grading papers. So, you know, like the chat, BT, chat GPT, right? Yeah. That kind of thing. So, um, you know, something like that. She draws up what she's looking for from students. You know, these are the key words that they need to express in their writing so that they know what they're talking about. So I can give them an A, not an F. So just like little things like that. Um, she can take their writing, their written example, and punch that into her software and it can essentially grade it for her based on her grading criteria. And wow. I'm like, that's a little scary, but yeah. I could totally understand where that would be so helpful. Can you imagine the workload that that would take off of teachers? Like, I don't know, I, I, I think it, it could be cool, but at the same time I could see just like any other system, somebody abuses it, you know? There's, there's mm -hmm. a lot of ways to get around systems, so. 
kind of like finding that balance like you want to use it as much as you can but then you don't want to lose that human connection exactly once you lose that human connection you just you lose everything oh yeah yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the creativity part i think a lot of people they look they hear ai they're like um they think they're gonna get like weeded out and i think the people that aren't that good will get probably weeded out you know because like you said um experience like the personal experience the personal touch the like for that stuff for like grading papers specifically the creativity of how to like there's not just one road to get to the solution there's multiple roads Mm -hmm. but that that road is only that way is only grading on this road right so that's where that's where that um could affect it but you don't see anything changing like on the business side you don't see it really evolving like that soon um, like with automation, like where people just completely just go online and do everything without. Yeah, we we do have a new challenge. So State Farm decided to change their billing system um, late last year, and that billing system. I mean, once we get this new automated software implemented in Colorado, it's going to be slick. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's almost like instantaneous stuff happens instantaneously. So um, a lot of agents are, you know. They're worried about it. They're like, okay, is, am I going to have to reduce my staff? You know, like what's going to happen? Am I even going to need somebody to, to write policies for me and do this and all that? Um, but the instant instantaneousness of it, I guess if that's even a word, um, that's going to make the billing so much more seamless. And um, so that's an area where it will be awesome. It's already happened in Nebraska. So, and I'm, I'm licensed in multiple states. So we work with it in Nebraska, but obviously the lion's share of our business is in Colorado still. So um, once Colorado gets it, I think it's going to make our jobs a lot easier and open us up for, you know, pushing more marketing, more sales and things like that. So I don't see it as, um, you know, having to reduce staff. I see it as kind of like teachers taking the workload off of my existing staff so that they can do what they're best at, which is sales, building relationships, et cetera. So anyways, it is coming. I don't know when. And just like any other big company, um, you know, it takes time. It's like, like turning the Titanic, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. How how much tools do you do? Like, so you're a state farm agent. Mm -hmm. Like, do you do your own personal stuff for like, being able to reach more clients or, or do you guys have like a f- like this is the way you have to do everything uh, since you're a state farm major right so state farm is a compliance heavy company everything's got to go through compliance and um it's is that good or bad it it can be both it can be both i mean obviously like so you're wearing a red shirt today so that, part of the state farm that, hey, that's, that's not, good. But, not but the that's, right shade. Yeah, that's not the right shade, you know? Gosh. And so um, take, for instance, my new office. So I just moved into a new office. It's wonderful. And working on the signage for that. So they have like a 42-page booklet of all of the signage standards. So if you go to Sherwin-Williams, like right next door, the, the color of red is like, it's like fire engine or something like that. You know, they, they've affiliated with, Sherwin Williams to get the correct color exactly. shade of red, mm-hmm. you know, like their brand kit, pretty much. Like exactly, because we deal with that too. Like for videos, like they got the brand kit. Like this is the font you're using. This is the text. Mm-hmm. These are the colors. Mm-hmm. This is my logo, and it has to be like don't all don't uh, what is it? What don't is deviate. It? Yeah, don't yeah. like move the logo mm-hmm. around. It has to be like this. Yeah, it's exactly. funny. Like a lot of people don't have it though. A lot of businesses they don't. I'm just like, how do you not have that? Yeah, exactly. but it's probably it's just something that's not at the top of their mind. Like. When you're first starting out a business, it's going to take you a while to get the business going before you even get to the level where you're thinking about your bracket and fonts and colors and all that stuff. Totally, totally. That does take a lot of time away from actually what you're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. You're 100% right. So so we're lucky there. And like I said earlier, um, you know, the support with the State Farm Company is just, it's astronomical. It's wonderful, but it can get annoying too. Um, so I have an awning at that office and I call the awning guy, I call the signage guys here, or, you know, the sign guys here. And, um, I had it scheduled for like two weeks out and I'm like, great, this is going to be the first thing done. It's going to be so cool. And it ended up being the last thing done because they, they sent me the design and I'm like, okay, that looks great. I like it. Let's rock. 
And then they're like, oh, no, 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 wait, you have to fill out a form and do a third party vendor because, you know, the State Farm affiliated company's not doing it for you. Okay. So it took them an entire month just for somebody to put eyes on it. Really? I kid you not, guys. They they sent me back the exact same artwork that wow. they had already sent before. And I'm like, really? I had to go through this and take more time. So the thing that should have been done first was done last. And I'm like, whatever. Just rolling my eyes. And so. So what are the. What are the fun. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. So what, what, I guess th- those are sort of like. There's good and bad things about it. What, what made you want to do just like go straight to State Farm instead of being just like a broker where you could offer different insurances? That's a great question, too. Um, I'm not bored yet. So um, I think it was the support. I think it was the support. Um, and, you know, you have to remember where I was at. You know, I was I was unhappy at my current current location, current um, career. And even though like and I can't I- explain it, it's just. You know, it wasn't the people, really. Um, I loved my patients. I really did. But it, that need to grow professionally was what was making me unhappy. You know, I was dragging myself into the office every day. And I hated that. And I said, you know what? I, I cannot get to the point where I'm giving less than 100% to my patients because that's not fair to them. You know, like it's mm. not it doesn't have anything to do with them why I want to grow professionally. So I still got to keep my head up keep grinding, you know. That's huge though cuz a lot of people don't. Yeah. And they just 20 years later they're still they're right. still they're still doing that uh the same thing. Yeah. But so ta- talking about like some of the, some of the, like the growing and stuff like what do you do for personal development? Cuz we were just talking about earlier when we first started business we're all naive. We think we're we're going to make a million dollars our first year in and it's not until like you hit that brick wall that you're just like, "Oh shit. Yeah. What's going on?" Like, do you is it like podcasts, you read books, do you have other people you bounce ideas off of, or what do you what do you do to kind of develop you yourself personally? Yeah, that's a really great question. So, um, I was telling you about the process to become a State Farm agent, and and really like why it was State Farm was because I jumped through the hoops. I jumped through the hoops, and I got the phone call on Friday at four thirty, and they said, "Hey, Amy, you're our guy," and I was just like, "Hell yeah! Like, let's do it." You know, I don't really know what I'm in for yet, but. I know I want to change and, and let's go with it. Which so, can, which can be good because right. if they would have told you this is everything you're doing. You're probably like, ah, uh, it might be you know. good. Yeah. So, so it was that change that I needed at the time and they've got, um, I mean, their business model is longevity. You know, you don't run into anybody who's a state farm agent who's like, oh yeah, I did that for a couple of years and then, you know, change jobs. Like that's not a thing. You grow, you grind, and you invest in your community, and it's who you are. It becomes who you are. So, anyways, that's to answer to finish up on your, you know, why State Farm. It's still State Farm, you know. But um, professional development wise, um, there are a couple of books that I kind of wanted to to tell some people about if they're listening because it just really spoke to me. So, um, we do have. Um, like regional territorial meetings. So all the state farm agents in Colorado, you're in a territory. Um, They just reorganized that at the beginning of the year. So it used to be kind of the the Highway 34 folks. So everybody out east, Yuma, Holyoke, Sterling, Fort Morgan, Brush, and then up into Greeley, Fort Collins, Wellington. So it was more like northern. Now they've reorganized that. So we're actually in a Denver metro territory and i'm like yeah hmm. right, like, De- this all looks like Denver Metro. <laughs> we're, we're all building that yeah and so um it's been it's been great you know building new relationships because there were uh some agents that i got pretty tight with in the Greeley fort collins area so i just i see it as an opportunity to expand and i still keep up with those people over there um picking their brains and and that kind of thing so now you know i get to make new friends with with the city mice <laughs> so, so are you uh say because there's a lot of agents that are state farming you can pretty much do insurance everywhere so is that like competition um yes and no i mean everybody is an independent contractor when you go to work for state farm and so basically they they take a heavy look at you they 
I mean, they ask for everything but a stool sample, I swear. Um, you have to submit financials. You have to submit a business plan. My business plan was 22 pages long when I interviewed. You have to sit through a rigorous interview with, um, you know, two guys that have met you like once. So um, anyways, it's intense. It's really intense. And they don't hire just anybody. So um, I know um, I was starting to tell you about like, the support and professional development and stuff. So when you get hired on with State Farm, you do an internship and it's a six month period where you just do training. You learn the systems, um, you work on kind of their model of how to have appointments with people, uh, what questions to ask, different things to uncover. And it also gives you an opportunity to, to get any licensing that they need you to get. So um, my internship group consisted of 16 from all over the country. I mean, we're talking Washington, Alaska, Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, California, everywhere, literally, all walks of life. Um, there was one Jake. There was one Jake. Jake from State Farm. Yes. What and are you wearing, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, Jake dropped out mid-internship. Like, um, they back before COVID, this was 2019, when I was doing this, um, they would ship you out to Dallas or Tempe, Arizona to do workshops. And it was, it was so fun. It was such a blast because it was like, you know, you're all soldiers going into battle. You have the same struggles. You got to find an office or do a build out. You got to find a team to work for you. You got to, you know, put all these different things together that it takes to run a business. And I mean, yes, it's state farm, but it's the same for anybody who's starting a business. You have to check off all of these boxes, you know? So anyways, um, my internship group was 16. Jake didn't make it. And there was one other guy who didn't get a contract. And it was basically you have 13 months to prove yourself. And then, you know, they hire you or say, sorry, we're not, we're not going to give you your, your big girl contract or your big boy contract. So that guy didn't make it. So talking about professional development and stuff, um, I talk to those people on a daily basis. We still have a group text message and it's like, hey, this happened today, what do I do? Or um, I mean, when you first start out, it's like deer in the headlights. And um, you know, I, I put out a couple of 911 messages where it was like, okay, group 911. And the first person to call, I'm like, Hey, this is what's going on. This is what I need. What do I do? You know? And so, um, that level of support is, is like unheard of, you know? So would you say kind of like that group chat's pretty much like your mentors? Uh, yeah, big time mentors. And so now it's fun because I've got a little experience under my belt too. And so now I find myself mentoring. And so that's really gratifying for me too, not just to, other agents but also to my team so that's awesome i heard a thing a while ago that says like when you're getting mentored like it's it's good because you're learning they do it like in sports but then when you're uh when you start coaching other people when you start mentoring other people that's when you learn even more about it because now you're seeing Mm -hmm. it from a different lens absolutely and um there's an old adage and it's i mean it's got to be true you learn when you teach you literally learn when you teach um back when i was in healthcare. Uh, physical therapy is, it's largely orthopedic, you know, joints, muscles, that kind of stuff. And so, um, you had to sit in, in the operating room for orthopedic surgeries, whether it was rotator cuff in your shoulder, um, joint replacements, those kinds of things. And, um, there was an intern in there one day and he was like, yeah, surgery is easy. You got to watch one, do one, teach one, and you're good. And I'm like, that's really? Easy, huh? Just, and, and then you can do all that, huh? Wow. Maybe I should have been an orthopedic surgeon instead. Right? <laughs> it's, so. it's simple, not easy. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Um, but yeah, you definitely learn when you teach. And so um, to continue on that professional development, there is a, a book that I read recently. Well, Audible. I mean, it's like the new reading, right? So on um, Audible, and it's called The Entrepreneurial Myth. Have you guys read that? at all no no I don't think so. <clears throat> it's great it's really great um and it just really spoke to me because it talks about the different parts of your personality and relates that to business ownership so um i'm just going to spoil it for everybody because i i use it Go every it. day 
So there's a technical part, technician, and that's the part of your personality that's like boots on the ground, in the kitchen, making the donuts at 4 a.m. And then, you know, doing the sales and stuff like that, basically running the day-to-day operations. And then there's the manager part, which, you know, looks at numbers, payroll, make sure staffing is on, um, you know, all of those managerial duties. And then there's the entrepreneurial part of your personality that's like coming up with new ideas and like, oh, let's make this kind of donut today. Or, you know, maybe the maybe the um, market would like this kind of donut or whatever it is. Or maybe we should, you know, put up a flyer that looks like this or do a video or something like that. So um, but part of that book explains why a lot of small businesses fail and it's because people go all technician and so it's like they're grinding it out constantly while also having to figure out how to be a manager and an entrepreneur and all these different jobs but really they don't know how to get past that technician role and really you know you have to figure out how to delegate in order to grow and otherwise you won't you'll you'll just you'll just quit Unless you just love making donuts at 4 a.m. all day, every day, and that's all you want to do for the rest of your life. But um, which part do you enjoy the most, the donut making or the entrepreneur? You know, um, the hamster wheel is always turning. So uh, I love working with my customers. I really do. Um, But I'm to the point now where I've got so much other stuff going on that I don't write a lot of policies. And so when I do, I sometimes I have to recall like, okay, wait. It's this quoting system, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, I got you, you know? Um, so I've delegated that out to my team, and I, I pay them appropriately, you know? And so then that kind of takes it off of me instead of feeling pressure like I'm going to save payroll by writing this policy myself so that, you know, the commission goes into my net revenue and inst- or gross revenue instead of paying my employee the commission. Like, nope, it's making my life much easier I've taught them everything they know. They're wonderful with customers and they got this, you know? And so then that, it takes the, takes it off of me so that I can do other stuff that's bigger. How long, how long did it take you to come around that realization? And, uh, yeah, like how long did it take you and, and how did you realize the realization that like delegating is going to help? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean that I read that book, I think it was about a year ago. And it was suggested in one of our corporate meetings. They were like, oh, yeah, here's a couple of, you know, good books that, um, you know, are, are good for people or whatever. So I'm like, all right, I'll give this one a try and just fell in love with it. But um, some days you feel like the water level is like right here and you're just like so close, you know, and I hate feeling like that. I hate feeling like that suffocation. And it's like, OK, something's got to give um, because we can't stop growing. You know, we, we won't. That's just not our personality. And um, growing up with sports, it was always bigger, faster, stronger, you know, like taking athletes from here to here with my physical therapy stuff. You know, um, it was never about staying the same. You know, it was always about growing. So um, I don't I don't know how long I don't I don't know if I have a timeline for that, but um, maybe like a couple of years ago, because you start out and you're, you're grinding, you're grinding, you're grinding. You want to write as much business as you possibly can prove yourself that you're the right guy for this job. And you know, they should continue to keep you on. Right. And, um, but then you start to collect your renewals and doing that kind of thing, which is great, but then you have more customers to work with. So then your stuff that you deal with every day, the service things, it it grows and grows and grows too with it because you're writing more policies, you have more customers, it's more work. And so if you're doing it yourself, it's like, okay, well, I spent all of my time this morning changing addresses or, you know, deleting full coverage or whatever the case was, and I didn't get payroll done or I didn't get my marketing strategies done or I didn't get this done. And so it's like you push it to the next day or, you stay up until midnight working on it or you're up at the crack of dawn the next day, you know, getting that stuff done. And so, um, it, it's exhausting. It it spreads you thin. It's makes you get to that point where you don't want to go into the office. And, um, I, I don't, didn't like that. 
So I think probably a couple of years ago when we really started to grow um, and get a lot more customer base, there's was a, probably a timeline. There's a, uh, cause I, I, I like to listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff and there's a lot of like coaches out there that say like business coaches that are saying like, Hey, you, the way for you to grow your business is that you have to t- take a step back from, from like the day to day and become like a, a, like they say, like CEO and just like manage the people. The thing that I think a lot of people, and I mean, it's happened to us in the past and it's probably bound to happen at another team where you get it, but you start taking step too fast and you don't have the right people trained in place. So it dilutes the work that you're like putting out, like the work that you're doing. And that's what happens to a lot of businesses. They're like, oh, you're making 500 grand, like a million a year or whatever more. They're like, they tell them like, we need to pull you out of the business so you can work the CEO aspect of it. But the problem is that they don't know how to be a CEO. And so now, and you don't know how to manage people. So now when you're just managing people, you don't know how to work that. So then the business suffers. So there's always that, I think that like fine line of like how much to do it, when to do it. And it's always like, cause you, you always, work. you always want to stay razor sharp. Like if you're doing sales, like you need to be able to close. If you're at the grocery store or if you're in the office, you need to be able to <laughs> present yourself, present what you do, how you do it and why you do it for them and why you're the person for them. So it's always that, I think that, that fine line, but yeah. Uh, I have to check out that book. That's it. Yeah. Interesting. Concept. It's good. It really is good. I, I like every single part of it and it's like it go the, the chick that they use is she's a baker and, um, the ending spoiler alert is like, you get back to your why, you know, why did you, why did you start this? Why did you open this donut shop in the first place? Well, because, you know, a long time ago, my aunt used to make donuts and it was like this sentimental thing and I got really good at it. And all of my friends were like, oh, you should open up a donut shop, you know, and um, didn't really understand all of the ins and outs of what it takes. But um, I do know other uh, state farm agents who that's exactly how they manage their office. And it's it's tough to um, it's tough to think about it for me because I love my customers and I love my team. Absolutely do. And so. um, If you get to that full blown CEO, it's like, where do the relationships fall? You know, do you pull out all together so that you're just like this talking head somewhere, you yeah. know, on a team's call or, you know, are, are you out of the office all the time all together? You know, like what happens to the relationships? And so um, the best leadership, the only way to lead is when you lead by example. Right. So right. I think that's where it gets tough. It does. Stuff to do. But at the same time, I mean, you cannot, you can't let that water level get up here, yeah. you know, like that's just too much and you will fail. You will either fail your team by, you know, not being a good leader or being too exhausted of a leader, or you'll fail your customers because you just have simply too much on your plate and it's, you know, you, you hit a mental break wall. So, but I do, I do really like that model and, and that's where I, I like thinking of it as kind of like a hybrid. So uh, one of my team members, I moved up to a sales leader position. And so basically um, where I started with this was a list, writing things down, staying organized, um, a list of all the things that I do. Okay, what do I do on a daily basis? And what can I hand off? Okay, so what is sales oriented? What is more office oriented? So right now we're kind of in a transitionary year. So this is the first year that I bumped um, this one up to a sales leader position. So um, it's been so fun to watch her grow and watch my other one grow because, um, you know, like when you, you work really hard on something and we do, there's just no time to, to practice interactions with customers on a, a daily basis. It's just too busy. So we did, um, um, workshops. So we would do like a Saturday workshop and, um, okay, let's write down what we want to talk about with customers. This is the campaign that we're going to work where we want to hit all these people, um, you know, who have this type of policy and et cetera, whatever we're doing. So we do like, you know, we order Acapulco Bay and, and just have a good time in the morning and just work on it and just crank it out. And then we're ready to rock the next Monday morning. And so, uh, you work on these things, you know, how to talk to people, you practice what you say, all this different stuff, and then you don't really understand what you're doing. You still don't understand it. And then you get a couple of interactions with customers, fail once, fail twice, 
fail three times. I don't even care. But like they get it that next time and watching that light bulb turn on and having them make that connection with, hey, we worked so hard on this. We practiced what we're saying to customers. We feel comfortable with it. And now I actually know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's a new level of growth for them. And then they feel comfortable talking about different stuff with customers. And so anyway, I, that's gratifying for me. So when you're talking about like leading by example and stuff, um, I mean, I feel like that's kind of my example. Like, hey, we're going to practice this. This is what we're working on. And you just repetition, repetition. And then before you know it, they get it. So anyways, it's been awesome watching them this year because we have tried a couple new strategies. And um, then my other uh, part of my, you know, hybrid CEO model is I hired or designated an office manager as well. So that big list of the things that I do, this is what, you know, one kind of manager is taking and this is what the other kind of manager is taking. So it's kind of in the experimental phase, but it's working out really great so far. And there have been so many instances where I'm like, I should just step in and do it. You know, I should be that technician. I should just, I'll take care of it, you know, like move kind of thing. Um, But I'm like, I'm sure that's hard. Yeah, I'm sure that's, I think that's the hardest part. You're like, I could do it. Way better and way faster. And you just have to sit there and watch them do it. You're just like, yep. Shit. Like, yep. Oh. Exactly. But but that's how they learn. That's how people learn. You have to let them fail. You have to to do that. But um, then you get to work on your management style when you make that constructive criticism and help them improve and help them understand. Okay, this is why we need to do it this way instead. And it's like you know they get it. So so it's awesome. I I can be more blessed with my staff i i would literally take a bullet for every single one of those ladies it's awesome that's yeah. great. <laughs> having that company culture like that is huge yeah uh, I, don't, I don't know if they feel the same way about me but um but i hope so i mean i hope we all retire together and so that's yes awesome. i think it's safe, safe to say that at whatever point we are in business whether we're starting out whether we're five years in 10 years in 20 years and 50 years and even that we all deal with insecurities they're probably not the same as they were at the beginning, or they might be the same. Um, whether it's like insecurities, doubts, or other people like in your in your ear telling you that you can't do this or you can't do that or whatever it might be. So what's something that you keep dealing with or that you deal with now that kind of keeps you from getting to that next level? That's a really great question and, and a loaded one. Um, haters going to hate, man. Haters going to hate. But... I go to work every day for my team, 100% my team. I know that what they expect of me and what they need from me. And, um, you know, they're, they're the biggest reason why I show up every day. So, um, yeah, there have been some, some negativities, not going to lie. And um, I haven't really had a whole lot of stuff on, like, social media, which – uh, back when we bought the Queens, we bought the Queens in 2014. So that was really kind of my first experience with business ownership myself. Um, my family owned and operated and still operates and owns um, a successful business in Otis. And um, I never thought that I wanted to be a part of that or anything like that. I, I wanted to do sports medicine, you know? So um, um, I don't know. I. I think when we bought the Queens, we had more negative stuff um, because the Queens had been there for so long. It was such a change to the community to have new owners. And, um, you know, when when they called us that day, I was kind of like, oh, no, like we're going to buy a bar like we just had a baby, you know, like, are you sure we want to do this? And um, I don't know, there was there was a couple of social media things that happened. And I'm like, OK, we're going to make a, a policy. We, we will not respond to negativity. We will use social media to promote, to market, to advertise, and that's it. We will use it in a positive light, and that's it. And we've stuck with that for, gosh, 10 years now, and it's worked really well for us. So I think there's been more negativity with that business, which, I mean, it's a bar business. There's drama. If you're going into it with the industry, like that's... Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. There's, there's just drama, and um, we have let so much of that stuff roll off and and for the better you know um weather the storm i can't count the times during that first year first couple of years that we just said that you know weather the storm it will blow over this too shall pass 
all of the things, right? Yeah. And um, and and it does. It really does. And so now we're established. Things are going well. And um, yeah. So I think as far as negativities and holdbacks, it's been more more relevant to that business rather than my insurance business. I think. Um, but there are some older um, State Farm agents who just they simply see as a threat, you know. And they're not willing to help you. They don't want anything to do with you. They see you as a nuisance and competition, like you said. Um, this new kind of wave of agents, the culture is different between them. Um, they are all about support, uh, beg, borrow, and steal. You know, um, as far as being competition with each other, I mean, there is a lot of business for all of us. Uh, the industry as a whole, I mean, the population's only growing, and so you know, there's certain policies that you have to have to be legal, you know? And if you think about it in an economical standpoint, I mean, mortgages, you know, you, you have to have fire insurance on your house. If you're going to get a loan, no banker's going to finance you without insurance. And same thing with being legal to drive those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, like I, I just think the way that Colorado's growing is, I think there's enough, enough business for all of us. So, I've not really run into too many other agents where it's like, oh, you know, darn you. But even then, it's kind of a mindset. You know, how do you, how do you think of those situations? How do you handle those situations? Do you let it eat at you and keep you up at night? Or do you let it roll off and move on to the next one? So, and that was one thing why, um, you know, my mindset is, bigger, bigger, um, an abundance type personality is grow. And, um, I made the decision to get licensed in Wyoming, Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma, because I'm like, Hey, the rates are pretty darn competitive over here. Like, why can't we market to these folks and get them in a better position with their insurance, you know? And so that's been good experience for us too, because we manage everything remotely. And um, I mean, we'll do our annual review just like everybody else. So we, we do an annual uh, policy review. We go through coverages, all that good stuff. And we do it over the phone or, you know, we were talking about technology earlier. They've made it to where they have their own little um, kind of a Zoom software. So you can be face to face with customers. So anyways, um, yeah, I, I don't really see that as like competition because I have a different mindset, you know, grow in other ways. Yeah. That makes sense. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm long way. No, that's good. That's good. We love it. <laughs> if, well, if people want to get to know a little bit more about you um, or, or about your, your business, where could they find you? Um, so we do have, uh, I should not be hard to find because I pay for that privilege. Um, we do a, a lot with our online presence. So social media, um, we're all over social media. Um, like I said, keeping it positive. We do have a website. It's amyginsurance.com and it's just got like a little bio. It's got all of our products on there. It's got our team. And, um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much, um, Google. So anyways, everywhere, everywhere yeah. online. <laughs> I know it. Right. Yep. Just pull out, pull out that cell phone or that computer. Okay. So. Awesome. Well, appreciate you for your time today. Thanks. Thanks for being part of the show. Yeah. Thank you guys. It's been uh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank so. you. Yep. Thank you guys. Catch you on the next one. Underrated, underrated, we don't underdogs, underestimated, yeah.